What's up, kings and queens? Thanks for watching another episode of Here For Your Hair. And right now, I wanna kinda take it back a little bit because I've been referring to hair type, hair texture in my other videos, and I've gotten a lot of responses and feedback and questions about figuring out what your hair type is. So today's episode is strictly all about finding your hair type and learning how to assess how to figure that out. So now when we talk about hair type and texture, the natural hair community has pretty much adopted this one method that was created by Andre Walker, who was Oprah's hairstylist. And in a book that he made, he created what is now known as the hair chart or the hair type chart. So before we get into it, I asked you guys what you thought about the hair chart. And here are a few really honest comments that I had on my Instagram page. Sean, Shawnee Reddick said, I'm not all the way in with it and it's only because we have a mixture of hair throughout our head. One side doesn't represent the same curl pattern and naturally to swear by this and I have to correct my clients. Her left side may be 4A and back may be 4C or whatever. Just an example that I'd rather deal with porosity levels to explain how to treat the hair with products. Not convinced, but I understand their method. Jane's obsession commented, I actually really appreciate the chart because to me, it makes it even easier to describe what's going on with my hair. And even more so for someone with different textures. I mean, isn't it much easier to say it's 4C in my crown area before A over here, rather than sitting there all day trying to explain. At least with the chart, a person has a good idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so here we have the hair typing chart. Now, it starts with your one, which is bone straight hair, and it goes all the way to your 4C, which is pretty much my texture. And a lot of people have questions about, where's my hair? I don't understand how to assess this. This isn't accurate, you know, whatever. The hair typing chart is basically meant to just have a frame of reference for what texture you are. So if you obviously have a fro, you know you, you're not in the ones, you're not in the twos, you are either in the threes or the fours, right? And if you have straight hair, you're not in the threes or the fours. So it just kind of helps everybody have a little bit more dialogue. Now, when it comes to being very specific about what your hair texture is, you usually have about three textures on your hair. For me, I'm somewhere between 4A, 4B, and 4C. I got a little bit of everything going on in this hair, but that's okay. I know what it is, I can have conversations about it, I can easily express what my texture is with someone who isn't a professional, and we can have a dialogue that's not super technical. Now there's another hair typing chart that's like L-O-I-S. Um, it's really complicated, even for me, I don't get it. So there are other ways to assess the hair outside of this, but what you need to know about this chart is a few things. You can pretty much go from here all the way to here by a few different ways, chemically, thermally, and if you just damage your hair too much, then it can get that straight. Now, you can also go from over here to over here if you do a chemical process called perming, okay? Now, I know most people think a perm is when you straighten your hair. It's not. A perm is when you permanently curl your hair so that it has definition. And people do that, believe it or not. Everybody doesn't always want to go from this way to this way. So if you do do a chemical straightening, your hair will permanently become the opposite of what it is and it won't ever get back to that unless you cut it or you grow it out. Now, the same thing can be said if you do a thermal straightening on your hair and take it from somewhere over here. Oh. <laughs> now, when it comes to thermally straightening your hair, from taking it somewhere in here to over here to one, you have to be very careful with the amount of times that you do that and the frequency and how often you do it because that could also permanently take your hair here and you won't be able to come back to where your natural texture is. So when you hear about heat damage, it's primarily because someone has straightened their hair excessive times in one sitting and also excessively over a period of time, a few months, a year something like that. 
Usually heat damage comes in when you wear extensions or when you just only have textures here in the natural space and you go from here every week, every two weeks, every day you straighten your hair, things like that, you're gonna, you're gonna permanently have straight hair. Now, how do you go back? If you wanna go back from here to here, the only way you can really go back is to cut it off. It's never going to curl back after you have taken the texture away, which is why it's very important to understand what your texture is and what your limitations are. So I would recommend if you are over in this area, straightening your hair here, maybe a few times a year. If you are gonna do it very regularly, try not to put heat on the same section more than two passes in one sitting. Also, don't use oil on your hair when you're straightening it out. I know Madam CJ Walker showed us a long time ago, you grease the hair first, you slick the, the grease on there, and then you go with your hot comb or your heated tool and you straighten it out. What's that doing? It's frying the hair. So you're gonna, you're gonna permanently take your hair from here to there and you're gonna fry it into permanently staying in this section and you won't get your texture back. Now, another thing that I want to address is how do you assess where your actual texture is versus, you know, over time, the hair does straighten out, it does, you know, get looser, things like that. You want to pretty much look at the first, like, two inches of your root, and that is normally going to tell you exactly what your natural hair texture is. Now. When Andre Walker made this chart, he didn't include two very important um, sections. He did not include 3C, which is right here, and he did not include 4C. And I feel some type of way because I'm in that 4C section, so I wasn't included. So I get why a lot of people don't like this chart because they don't feel like it accurately represents their hair texture. It's fine. At the end of the day, someone was smart enough to say, hey, we need another two curl patterns in here because it's a lot of systems that's not being included in this. So they put 3C here, which is more of your coily, this is like my hair goes right here. I mean, it's never gonna happen for me naturally and that's okay because I know how to do my hair. But this texture is um, a really nice texture because it can straighten a little bit easier and get over here, but then it also still has a lot of that definition and that fullness and that, you know, big, beautiful, complete spiral figure eight kind of curl. And now 4C is another section that wasn't included. And, you know, there's so many women that are in this section and either don't know it because they permanently relax their hair or they straighten their hair on a regular basis, or they're not really sure how tight their curl pattern is. If it's like pretty microscopic tight, but then you can still see a twirl, it's in the 4C. My hair is also 4A, but I also color it. And what the color does is it also stretches the curl pattern out. So once again, going back to any permanent services, any chemical services, they're going to move your hair texture down a few notches to closer to one. So you have to be very, very careful with your color services and your chemical services and your heat services. Because if you do want to keep your curl pattern, then you want to make sure you just don't overdo it, okay? Now, what's not included in this chart are a few other ways that you can type your hair. One way is density. How much hair do you have on your head? I have some clients that have three times the amount of hair as the average person. And I have some clients who sadly enough don't have the average amount of hair. That all goes into density. How much per square inch of hair do you have on your head? So you have normal, thick, or thin. So you can say, my hair is a thicker density and I am a 3B. Or you can say, my hair is a thin density and I am a 4C. So that helps also with explaining what you have. Um, another way to talk about your hair is the thickness of the strands. So you have the thickness of the amount of hair you have and then the thickness of each strand of hair. So when you look at one strand of your hair, you can pretty much assess if it's thick, thin, or normal based on comparing it to the thickness of a piece of thread, okay? So if your hair is about the same 
um, and feel as a piece of thread, it's pretty normal. If it's thinner than a piece of thread, then you would consider it to be fine. If it is thicker than a piece of thread, then it's coarse. So like Asian hair, which is pretty much over hair in one or two, is very thick in the texture of the hair. It's very coarse, but it's also straight. So you can say, I have very coarse hair, but it's in the one series or it's in a 2A. And you can also say, but the density is very thick. So these are different ways to really assess the hair. It's not just about the hair texture necessarily, but it's also about how much hair you have and how thick each strand of your hair is to then be able to decide what does my hair need. The last thing that you want to think about is porosity. Does your hair absorb moisture or water or does it repel it? Usually very coarse hair repels moisture. It does not hold on to water. So you have to do a lot more work with putting the moisture in, which makes it dry. And now some hair is very porous. It does collect moisture really easily. And so that hair, it does better when it is curly. It does better when it has color on it. It does better when it is naturally dry because then it absorbs the moisture and it can hold in whatever products you put in it. So these are that's the fourth way that you can assess what your hair is doing. So the chart itself is a very easy visual way to analyze, all right, I'm somewhere around here. You don't have to be exact when you're comparing what your hair is, but it's good to know so that you can talk about it correctly. Now, porosity, density, texture are also other ways to explain what your hair does. So get to know those terms as well because they do help when you're communicating what your hair needs and why. And it's better for you to know what you need for your hair before you let someone else do it because then you can explain, all right, this is what my hair does. I've been living with this hair all my life, so these are the things that it does. And it just makes it easier conversation. Whew, okay, that was a lot. I hope you took it in. I hope it wasn't too much for you. But what I do want to say to end on a good note is it doesn't matter what your hair texture really is. It's cool to help you identify how to treat your hair, what you can do, what you can do, things like that. But at the end of the day, your hair is beautiful. And good hair is not hair of any specific texture. It's well-maintained, healthy hair. So as long as you learn how to maintain your hair and do what's right for it, you have good hair. Now, I mean, I know sometimes we all get hair envy, curl envy from different textures, and it's okay. I mean, just think of it kind of like, you know, if you have big feet or if your feet may not be the cutest. At the end of the day, you might think about it every once in a while, like, dang, I wish my shoe was smaller, whatever. But once you find a store that has bomb shoes, guess what? You still gonna slay. It doesn't matter what size you wear, right? Same thing with hair. Just rock it, love it, and be fly, whatever. So on that note, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot. My name's Angela and I'm here for your hair.